Hello. Today I'm talking about what happens when the black sheep leaves the family. This is my jam and this is what I'm going through right now. So let's talk about it. Um, first of all, being the black sheep is such a painful role to have to bear in your dysfunctional narcissistic family. Um, I just turned 39 and I am, I just learned what it is, like the name of this dysfunction that I was raised in. Um, I learned that my mother is a narcissist and ever since that, it's like everything just fell into place. All this crazy making that they've been doing to me for all these years, it finally has a place. I finally see it for what it is and it feels awesome. It's also sad because you're learning that it's a confirmation basically that, you know, your parents hate you, kind of. I mean, narcissistic mothers, narcissistic parents, do not have the capacity to love. To They don't possess any altruistic characteristics whatsoever. Everything they do is focused around themselves. Everything they do is focused around forwarding their agendas. So, I am in the process of leaving this horrific environment that I've been exposed to my whole life. And let me just say that the general consensus is that going no contact is the best way to counteract this type of abuse. If you get out of it, don't look back. And from what I understand, everyone that has done this is thrilled with their decision. So don't question yourself. Everyone has the right to protect your basic needs as a human being to be respected. Um, and you're entitled to your boundaries. You know, narcissistic parents don't have any regard for that type of stuff. They view you as a piece of property, as a possession, and they will abuse you accordingly. They um, let themselves into your life at their whim. Um, they'll go through your stuff. They don't care. They'll ask you invasive questions because I'm your mother, right? And for the longest time, she got by with that shit because I was like, yeah, she's my mom. Why would she have any boundaries? She needs boundaries because she's toxic as hell. And without them, she just wreaks havoc. And when you realize that your relationship is a one-way street where she is just a bloodsucker, just taking whatever she can from you, that's when you're like, hmm, I do have a right to protect myself. And that has been a game changer for me. So the black sheep leaving the family. This is what I'm doing. This is my jam. So, recently, um, you know, I've just been gray rocking the shit out of my mother and not responding to her, not speaking to her on the phone when she calls. And it's been awesome. It's been wonderful. I feel so free. I feel so happy. And it got to the point where she didn't like it. If you watch my past videos, you'll... You know, you know about the showdown that happened because she wanted to confront me. Um, never mind the fact that she is 300% in the wrong and always has been. She wanted to confront me because I'm bothering her, hurting her in some way. She is the perpetual victim. So when the black sheep leaves the family, if you, I learned this, if you have an engulf, there's two types of narcissistic mothers. There's the engulfing mother and there's the 
ignoring mother. The ignoring mother will just be like, see ya, like she won't pay any attention. Like you being there or you not being there isn't going to impact her life. She's whatever, she'll just get on without you. Um, if you have an engulfing mother, which I have, of course, because she's like the worst of the worst of everything. An engulfing mother will not let you go quietly. She'll put up a fight. Um, she's just carrying on like a child having a tantrum. So that's what happened in my house the other week because she was getting so annoyed that I'm, you know, protecting myself and having some self-respect enough to not deal with her. Anyway, um, so I think what happens occurs in stages. Like, I have no doubt that she is talking so much shit about me to anyone that will listen. Um, yeah, I feel like she's been doing that my whole life. But that's one. But I think she's also a lot out making an alliance with my orbiting enabling father I think that the two of them are just teaming up and you know putting me as the um villain they're villainizing me they're talking about how terrible I am so they're bonding over their shared hatred for me it's insane but I'm sure that's happening but at some point they're going to like my orbiting enabling father is going to realize oh shoot I'm stuck with her because she is going to take out her narcissistic aggression on him he is going to be her number one victim now if the black sheep is out of the picture the narcissist needs to get supply from someone. So no doubt she's playing the victim card till, you know, till the very end. She's the victim. I'm terrible. I'm hurting her. So that's one. And next she's going to start lashing out at my orbiting, engulfing father. And, you know, something that I always, like, I always thought there was hope for him. I always thought, you know, he's got to be the sensible one out of this toxic duo. I think I can approach him to, you know, see how terrible she's being. And, you know, he's got to have some rational perspective on this. And I was grossly wrong over and over again. I have tried to approach him and he just ferociously defends his narcissistic wife because she has him conditioned to do so. That's been their setup since before I came into the world and that will be their setup till the end, I suppose. Um, but as the black sheep, that's my dog's ear. Oh no, it's not, it's the pillow, sorry. He's back there, he's back there somewhere. On the cat. There he is. That's Gina. Anyway, um, so the black sheep is the gar the garbage can for all of the family's toxicity, for all of their aggression and hostility. It gets put, you know, onto the black sheep, the scapegoat, for their entire duration of stay in the family. And once you remove that... It's just like they don't know what to do with themselves. The, the whole foundation of my dysfunctional narcissistic family, my mother being the narcissist, but it's all dysfunctional because of her. Like no one communicates, no one talks, no one has any substantial relationships. And I'm like the only one that kind of can like adds this element to this terrible dynamic and it's like like with me being out of the picture it's like what are they going to do with themselves and the absence of the black sheep of the scapegoat 
is truly felt during holidays, family get togethers and things like that naturally. So I was saying to my husband, I'm thrilled and really looking forward to us taking our holidays back this year. Like my husband has some family that we've recently just found thanks to Ancestry.com. And um, we have our chosen family are our friends. And this is interesting because my flying monkey, golden boy brother, always, and my narcissistic mother as well, um, they always attacked the way that the relationships that I had with my friend, that I have with my friends. It was like, oh, your friends mean more to you than your family and blah, blah. And like, you're damn right they do because I love my friends and my friends genuinely care about me and I genuinely love and care about them as well. Like, that's the dynamic that allegedly families are supposed to have. But when you come from a narcissistic parent and dysfunctional family, you don't have that. So I'm inclined to think that with these upcoming holidays, it's going to be totally miserable because my narcissistic mother and enabling father, you know, I'm older, my sibling is older. I have no contact with my sibling as well, by the way. And I love that. It's been that way since my son passed away in 2013. And no regrets on this end in that department. So... Um, anyway, so my narcissistic mother and orbiting father, they're going to be like, I was always the go-to for holidays and, you know, we were, all, we're the ones, we're the fun ones in the family. We're the ones, like my husband is so fun. He's awesome. I love him. He's the reason why I'm able to freely communicate now, like God bless him. I'm going to make him do a video with me about this one time. But I met my husband in college and I was so screwed up from being raised in this toxic dynamic, this family where nobody communicated, nobody had any genuine, you know, affection or regard for one another. So when I met my husband, he is adorable. He's so loving and expressive. And his mom was wonderful. God bless her. She passed. But, you know, I thank her for raising such a good man. But um, I was messed up so badly when I met him. And I was like, what is this? Like, he genuinely loved me. God bless him. And I was so screwed up. I broke up with him so many times. And in the interim, I became engaged to a narcissist because, of course, that's what I gravitated to because that's our that's our standard for, you know, what we see a, a relationship should be. Like, unloving, like, just someone disrespecting me. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. That's good. It was horrific. Thank God he discarded me. But, um... Back to the black sheep leaving the family. It's going to be a big upset. And it's awesome because all these years that I was trying to be like, you know, you did this to me, you did that to me, you disrespected me, blah, blah, blah. It just fell on deaf ears. But my absence is going to speak louder than anything I've ever said. And I believe that's what happens when the black sheep takes off. The miserable narcissistic parent is left with their enabling parent and miserable. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, they'll probably gang up and villainize you for a while and get anyone on their team that they can, you know, like in school when you're a little kid and you're like having a fight with your friend and you try to get everybody on your team, and they try to get everybody on their team. So silly, but so juvenile, but that's what you're dealing with when we deal with narcissists. Anyway, 
Um, so I think from what I understand from everyone reporting back to me, I feel like going no contact is the only way to protect yourself, to live your best life, to just get out from this toxicity because a narcissistic parent, and, and if you can't do, I understand some people probably cannot go no contact. If you don't go no contact, protect yourself with boundaries and with minimal interaction and minimal information. You know that the narcissist thrives on your life. Whatever you have to offer, they'll suck it all out. They'll take every little bit that they can get. So just gray rocket, keep it to a minimum. If you can go no contact, do it. Um, the black sheep are the best, the best. Only ones with hope in, you know, extricating yourself from this horrific, you know, upbringing. And I knew my whole life, like something feels terrible and I have my own family now and I'm thrilled and I love them and I treasure them and I cherish them. And that's the way a family should be. So hang out with your chosen family, your friends, anybody but these toxic people that try to put you down all the time. So um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, leave me any comments if you have input on this topic or if there's anything else you want me to speak about uh follow me on instagram i will link that below and god bless you guys we're down but we're not out we're getting out from under this dark cloud of narcissistic abuse god bless you